What's up, YouTube? Derek here, Regatta Woodwork, and I'm back at it again. Um, wanted to show you guys, I just got done making this charcuterie board. Solid walnut. It's got a slight live edge on it. Did a little heart handle. It's Valentine's Day, fellas, coming up right around the corner. Um, so I'm probably going to make a lot more of these here pretty soon. Um, I'm going to show you how I built this thing. Uh, this one will not be going on my website. We are actually doing a Facebook giveaway. Um, thousand followers so far. I'm going to go ahead and raffle this thing out here in the next day or two. And we'll be making some more of these. But check out the video. See how I make it. If you want one, message me. Um, we can make plenty more of these things. I think it's beautiful. Came out real nice. So drop a comment. Follow, subscribe, show me some love. Let's get on to the video. First, we're gonna go over to the joiner and get some nice flat edges on this to start the milling process. We're gonna start on one side, get it nice and flat, rotate it over 90 degrees up along the fence here and get that nice 90 degree edge, which will be the first part of the milling process. We're gonna do this to all our pieces that we currently have. So we'll take it over to the table saw and to the thickness planer. Make sure everything has a nice tight fit. I'm going to go over to the table saw. I'm going to rip this piece down in half. Um, this is going to go on both sides of a longer piece I have that will be used for the handle. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut this down to about one inch thick. I really wish I had my band saw. It is still on my online shopping cart. I need to get one. It's a lot better way to rip these boards down into smaller stock, but that's coming soon. Next, we're gonna go over to the thickness planer and get them all even, even thickness, same dimension, so it makes the glue up process a lot easier, less sanding later. We're gonna run a couple passes on this and get to a thickness that we're looking for. Gonna get our clamp set up here. Lay it down, everything's looking good, it's lining up. Go ahead and put some tight bond three. It is very good for food safe surfaces. And smear it on there real good. Line it up and we're gonna clamp this baby up. Now it is uh, only about a little over three quarters of an inch thick, so I don't want the board to cut. We're going to put some sacrificial boards on both sides here just so we can get some clamping pressure up and down to avoid any cupping as we apply pressure side to side with the clamps. Uh, this will help keep everything nice and flat. Get a nice squeeze on it. Uh, you want to see the glue start to squeeze out, but you don't want to overdo it and squeeze all of your glue out. Then there's no glue to hold it together. So the next day, I took it out of the clamps, and I'm just going to use my chisel and scrape off some of the glue drips, some of the bigger pieces of glue that globbed up from the squeeze out. Uh, we don't really want to run those through the planer like that. You want to keep your planer blades as sharp as possible. We're going to take it over to the planer now and get that final smoothing out. Alright, so we got her out of the planer. I got it nice and flat. This right here is where the handle is going to be. And what I'm going to do is 
I did print a heart out. Uh, I wasn't going to freehand it. So we're going to cut in a handle, heart shape handle, right about there. This will be trimmed down to size. It's not going to be necessarily this wide. But before we get to that, we do got some cracks here. Got a little knot right there. A um, couple on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my Dremel tool and we're going to clean these up real good uh, so that we can fill them in with some of this medium thick star bond. I'm going to get this all in there, cleaned up, then we'll replane it down, get it nice and smooth, and then we'll start trimming it down. We're going to get in here and take out all the loose pieces, any soft wood that's in there, chunks of bark, just so we get a good seal with the CA glue. Dremel tool works great for this. I uh, blew it out with an air compressor uh, just to get all the dust out of there. Then we're gonna pour some of the CA glue in there. Uh, if it's a little deep, you can do it in layers. Uh, it's a lot better for it. And then we spray the accelerator on there, let it dry up real quick. Here I put a little bit of tape on the edge just so the glue didn't pour out the side of that crack. Works real good. Spray it with accelerator and we pull the tape out. Then we get to sanding uh, using an 80 grit here. And we're just gonna sand it down flat, trying to do even passes all the way around the board so there's no differences in thickness. Uh, so we're gonna sand this down and get those spots where the CA glue was nice and flat. Boy, do I love sanding. I need to get me a helper to do this. If you're willing to work for lunch and dinner and a good time, uh, hit me up. I got a job for you. All right, so we got this thing all sealed up with the star bond medium thick dark brown ca glue uh, so what it does it gives it a nice little natural look you know there was a knot right here but you don't want all that soft rotted wood from the knot so we cleaned it all out and filled it up with the glue now we're going to spray some water on there so you can see once this thing cleans up it's going to look like a natural knot again except it's going to be harder same thing with the handle here. You'll see we had a little crack there. We're gonna spray it down. Now it just highlights. Now it just highlights the wood. And it's strong, it's flat, it's smooth. Doesn't look like an imperfection. Um, so that's how you fill some small voids and stuff. You can use epoxy, or for smaller stuff, you can use the Star Bond medium thick, dark brown, CA glue for the darker woods and they do have clears um, but it works very well now let's go ahead and continue on with this board here go ahead and measure the center of this handle here uh, just so I could lay my little heart template right on it and center it up get it as straight as possible I'm going to use the curves of this other charcuterie handle template to mark out the edge profile that I want here. Um, and we're gonna throw the little heart template in there, line it up to where I want it. I am using a Sharpie. Uh, it's a little easier to see on the darker woods when you go to cut. I'm gonna take a pencil here and I'm just gonna freehand the inner portion of the heart here, make sure it's leaves enough meat in there of the wood so it doesn't break. Um, then I'm going to go over it with my Sharpie so I can see it. I'm going to 
mark out all the dead space, parts I want to cut. This way I don't get out of hand and cut the wrong spot. Now take a forzer bit here and take out as much as I can on the inside of the handle uh, where I can get my jigsaw in there and cut the rest of it out. Now jigsaw works real good for this. Um, it doesn't make a perfect cut. Um, and that's where the sanding process comes in. But it does a good job to get the bulk of it out of there. Just got to make sure you have a good scrolling blade so you can make some of those turns. Doesn't have to be perfect. As I said, you're going to be sanding it down to its final um, shape. Now for the outer edges, um, like I said, the jigsaw works good. Bandsaw would have worked real great, but I still don't have it. So I need to get one quick. But the jigsaw does work good. We'll go around here and get this final portion cut out. I'm going to go ahead and round the bottom edges off here. And you guessed it. We're going to go back to sanding. So I got a 80 grit on my orbital sander here and we're gonna do the shaping now get all the saw marks from the jigsaw blade get those off any of the little imperfections and start shaping it get it all nice and flat the orbital gets a little big in certain areas especially when you have a lot of curves, but we're able to do those with hand sanding and Dremel tools. A lot of different ways you can get creative and get all the sanding done, but that is a step that you do not want to pass up. The more sanding you do in the right steps and right process, the better your finish will come out. So I did mention a Dremel tool and I got a little sanding wheel in here and we're going to use this to get into these tight little spots on the inside of the handle, clean it up real good. One thing I learned with the Dremel, you just don't want to apply too much pressure because it is a powerful little tool and it will start digging into the wood. Let me go ahead and Take some of the crosscut sled and just trim up the bottom edge here. And back to my favorite task, sanding. So we are going to stick down as much as possible. We're going to start with an 80 grit. Then we're going to go over to a 120 grit. Um, go to a 180, then a 220 grit. So a lot of sanding involved. Um, make sure we get this little live edge part here. And my beautiful assistant. Don't tell her I called her an assistant. Uh, she got a little carried away with the camera here. But even got me in there. Look at that. I worked. So, got her all sanded down. I did raise the grain. I uh, didn't film that. Uh, spread it down with some water and then we're gonna gonna sand down all the edges with some uh, hand paper and 220 grit and now we're gonna do a final 220 grit on all the surfaces here and that'll stop it from feeling fuzzy I blew it all off with the air compressor take off all that loose dust and here we're gonna apply the 
food grade mineral oil, uh, like using these little foam brushes. They seem to hold the mineral oil in there good, um, gives it a nice spread on there. We're gonna do both sides here. Make sure we got enough on there so it soaks into the wood. Make sure we get some inside the handle here. We want to get a, every inch of the board. And then we're going to let it sit overnight and let all that oil soak into that board. Man, do I love how it looks when it's lathered in oil. Ain't she pretty? So we're going to let it sit overnight. And the next morning, I dried off any excess with a clean rag. And then I'm going to apply some of my board wax mixture and let it sit for about 20, 30 minutes. Um, my board wax mixture is beeswax and mineral oil that I make here. Um, they do come complimentary with every product bought on my website. And if you have a, another piece that you didn't purchase from me, I do sell the wax alone um, if you're looking for any. So we're going to get it all waxed up there and then we're going to buffer out with a orbital buffer. It's just a car buffer, but it works good. Uh, get a nice little sheen on there, get it all nice and even and she's done. That's it. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like I said, I will be raffling this one off on Facebook. Be sure to check us out, Regatta Woodworking on Facebook. Check out the website and please share, subscribe, and help me grow my venture. Thank you all once again for watching.